But like, uh, yeah, we're we're not really updated from point to point on how it's doing. Well, his brain ain't doing good because the abris immediately make him not aware of what's going on. So then, in a moment that could best be described as post nut clarity. <laughs> He realizes what's happening. I'm sorry. That's the fucking best. <laughs> it was the same thing with, with the Marizwith queen. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, oh, fuck. What did I do? Oh, no. Mm. This is bad. Well, I think part of it had to do with watching the Sliff, right, try to revive Kaylin in the corner. Like, he's paying attention to Marissa over here. And meanwhile... You know, our woman of Quicksilver is out of her well and like, breathe, come on, breathe, completely ignoring whatever the fuck is happening between the two of them up up top. So I guess I just mean like something stirred him out of it, just like him dropping the breathe the last time. This time it oh, was yeah. something else like related to Kaylin that helped him be like, oh, reality, hey. <laughs> There's something going on over here, guys. Yeah. So he pulls the Sword of Truth from the stone floor where he left it and plunges it into the sliff, okay? Okay, not into her, like, body, but her body, right? Like, it, the, the rest of the Quicksilver is still in the well. He stabs. Yeah. And Marissa is still in the sliff? Or, like, half beats it to death because by now, let's face it, that blade is dull as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Last one, I promise. But so he plunges it into the slip, which Marissa is still in, mm -hmm. but because he's out and the sword of truth going in kills anything in there, she died. Yes. Obviously, it doesn't affect the slip, but we know that the sword is not allowed to travel in the slip. Right. Uh, for whatever reason. It's magic. It's, yeah. Special Richard magic stuff. Mm-hmm. It can't go in there, and we know that it's death to travel with it. So because Richard knows that, he just plunges the sword in there. I feel like he's taking a risk on maybe killing the Sliff while he's doing it. Yeah. Technically, God knows what would happen to Kaylin if the Sliff died while she still had it in her lungs. But that's maybe thinking too large. Anyways. Oh, shit. Like macro, yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, so he stands Oh, it. fuck. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, what you just said really hit home, and he totally could have killed Kalen. Yeah, you don't know they're all connected, yeah. dude. Yeah, it could have it could have been rough, but whoa! Instead, Marissa just turns to goo and disappears into the well. Oh well, that's fine. Yeah, she she turned into silver goo. <laughs> Crawl back into the drain where you came from, yeah. clown. <laughs> So a couple of things happen next that sort of imply the Sliff has a thing about the truth. Richard revives Kaylin by squeezing her middle. And when she comes to, she says, you saved me. And the slip says, but he killed the other one. Like, she immediately uh, wants to make it clear that it, he didn't just save everybody. The other person died. Yeah, and I guess I just don't really know why, why the slip feels the need to interject here. Is that weird? Like, why? what's the purpose? Mm, I guess I wasn't thinking about that when I listened to it the first time. but. Yeah, it is a little bit weird that she's immediately like, he killed the other one. <laughs> Richard definitely should have mentioned that to Kaylin, but it was strange of the ca of like well, the slip to offer that up. It was a half a second ago. Yeah. She's like, you saved me. Yeah, but he killed the other one. Yeah. It was, Why? Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, I'll get there. Yeah. I mean, or maybe it just knows. Yeah, she's weird. I don't know. The slip is a weird thing. The other weird thing she does is when Richard explains the other one's Marissa and that she wanted to kill Kaylin and take a bath with Richard, the Sliff says, no, she wanted to bathe in your blood. Uh, it's weird that the Sliff differentiated, but it's also weird, okay, that Richard fucking said it the way he did. Yeah, why would you say it that way? Say it literally any other way. No, she wanted to take a bath with me. Like, let's not sexualize this other woman that Kaylin just had an issue with you potentially fucking. Like, why would you accentuate that at all? Yeah, why wouldn't you emphasize that she wants to fucking kill you? I feel, in a way, it's because it's Richard and because he's pure, he can say these things. 
And as long as he didn't intend it to sound that way, then it really doesn't matter because he is such a good guy. Like, we know. We know. He wanted it to sound better and, like, not. It wasn't sexual to him. Right. Exactly. Ew. That's annoying. Go, go. Well, uh, it didn't help. No. Not us. Kalen is apparently fine with this explanation. Yeah. And just like, oh, okay. Yeah, bathe in your blood. What the fuck? <sighs> Anything else? Like, yeah. that was it. But to us, yeah, not helping. No, not helping. So all this talk about, like, bathing and warm water and, you know, early in the episode we were talking about uh, hot tubs and Hot beer. tub full of beer. So I think it's time for a beer break. I have, I'm having, like, some weird Pavlovian response uh, <laughs> to the bath comment. I need to have a beer. You seem to be struggling to find your words right now. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I need the beer, you see? Okay, so tonight we are drinking yet another one of Brewery Vivant's Unapologetic Fruit series. And I mm. am so happy because I think I, I said it all to you the last time. Brewery Vivant did not do a whole lot of uh, fruity shit the last time I was there. No, this is another sour. They were doing fruit sours when we were there the last time. Yes. I, I don't remember the one we tried, though. I don't either. It was a long time ago. We've had a lot of beers. It was not this one. I know that. No. So this is Straw Barb. It is. Straw Barb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That. I don't know why I. Canadian accent all the way. Mm-hmm. Straw Barb. So it's a strawberry rhubarb sour. It is a delectable blend of fruited farmhouse ale and sour ale. So it's not even a full sour. And it is delectable. I can attest because I have had some of it. It is also... Was delectable on the can or is that your own $5 word? No, it was on the can. Oh, (laughs) okay. It's 5% and I like it. Solid. It's very, very light. It's got really good flavor. Um, You said it was... Wait, IPA? No, 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 no. Ale and sour. Ale. Okay, that's what I heard. Um, I was going to say no bitterness from the ale almost whatsoever. No, that's probably sour and the barb. And the burb. No, no, this is very, very good. Strawberry for sure, right out in front. Don't really know what rhubarb tastes like. I don't know. You can get a strawberry rhubarb pie, though. I know that's a thing. How about we just buy some rhubarb and bite it and see what happens? I think there's a part you can't eat and a part you can eat. Oh, so we got to do some reading before we do that then. Yeah. Best not to just eat strange things. We're from the woods. I should know better than this. Let's get another beer and talk about that later. Okay. We'll be back right after this. (laughs) And we, oh, claps to start. Here we go. (laughs) So as soon as Richard and Kalen leave Colo's room, they run smack dab into the fucking Mrizwith Queen, who's guarding hundreds of melon-sized eggs. Surprise! <laughs> Richard holds her back with the sword while Kalen starts smashing eggs with a board, because that's what you do. Mm-hmm. They actually do okay here, even though the queen lands on Richard's leg and fucks it up a little bit. Um, just a mashed wound, though. No big deal. Yeah. He literally is like, no, she just mashed it a little bit. I'm fine. It's no big deal. Uh, The whole scene is a little bit like, (sighs) first of all, again, Richard has not explained any of this to Kaylin. So she's just like, what? Like, she acts, she doesn't act like she's surprised at all, but she should be. I would be. Well, she's fully in. Richard's like, we got to do this shit. Yeah, she's so like, she's like, okay, cool, smash the eggs. Asks no questions. But for a while, like immediately when Richard goes into the room, he's like, I'm going to try to smash the eggs and ignore the, the queen. And I'm like, no, you kill the queen. What the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, you can't afford, you got, you got to get rid of the queen first. That way the eggs are left undefended. Yeah, but no. Another thing I found really, really funny is Kaylin and Richard have this whole thing about Marissa at the beginning of the chapter. And this proves, proves that she was more worried about Marissa fucking Richard than she is about a, I think we, Wyvern, Wyvern. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that word. But Marissa was more concerning to Kaylin than this thing. To be fair. And she hasn't asked any questions about this thing either. This thing has not come up until right now to Kaylin. 
to my knowledge. Oh, right. Total Kaylin surprise. Kaylin had no idea this thing even existed until now. She knew Marissa existed because she had heard about it. So I will give that point to Kaylin. Well, I suppose a point where a point is due. <laughs> so once all the eggs are destroyed. By the way, this has to be extremely messy. Yeah. It, they they say something about Kaylin wading into some yellow yeah, muck. Yeah, like, covered in real egg yolk. Real gross, real gross. Ew. At least stomp around and make some scramby eggs. No, gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Ew. Ain't you ever had dragon eggs? They're the best. Mm. The best. Mm-mm. They got a little heat I don't want to wade them. in none of that. None of it. <laughs> See, my mouth just None went like, nah. You were so grossed out, yeah. your mouth couldn't even make the... <laughs> the words. That's fine. No. So once all the eggs are destroyed and they have their scrampy eggs for breakfast, the queen switches to escape mode. And fuck it, we're not staying around for the kids. No. They're gone. So it's time to leave. She starts climbing up the tower. Richard starts climbing up the tower. But, like, he can't really... They don't have claws. Yeah, it sounds like she can span the width of this thing, so she's just, like, climbing her way up, and Richard only has one solid flat wall. Yeah. And as badass as he is, he can't climb straight up. He's not Spider-Man. Because that's not something people can do. Yeah. So in that way, he is human. Yes. Um, <laughs> and he watches as she climbs through the opening at the top of the tower. So now they have to get down to the city. Oh, shit, leaving her for later didn't work out. Yeah. Richard has to guide Kaylin to the entrance of the keep because she's never been down in this level before. And even when they get to a spot where she does recognize where they are, Richard is still taking her away. She knows she's not supposed to go, but they do anyways. She's like, where are we? I don't know, like, um, underneath the... The library or yeah. some shit. She's like, we're not supposed to be down here. It's like, yeah, well, that's where we are. I don't know what to tell you, yeah. but this is the situation, Kate. Look, I'm not lying to you about Marissa. I'm not. I didn't not lie to you about the weird dragon thing. Um, I'm telling you the truth. I just stumbled my ass down here. I don't know what to tell you. And I've done this like three times, two times. Uh, yeah, two times already. He's technically com- three. I think he's coming to the keep a lot more than that, though. Has there? Yeah, I guess because there's been like time gaps where yeah. he's going to and from to yeah. study. And okay, that that makes sense. But so when they get to the entrance of the keep, Kalen is appalled to learn that Richard had chosen the door with Tavo de Ato Mortado written above mm. it. She's like, you use this door. Look at what it says. He's like, well, I can't fucking read that. And then she she says the uh, non, um, what is it? Not ba- We've had this conversation way too many times. Um, basic, whatever. Or <laughs> I I know we've talked about it. I, I common, should... common common tongue. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't, I'm not that chalant about it. I just feel like um, I don't fucking know, and I'm sorry. It's not in the language they speak, but she just repeats it back. To him, like, and like saying it twice in Spanish is going to do him any good. It doesn't say what language it is either. No, but she does explain to him that that means the path of the dead. His excuse is, well, I can't fucking read that, like I said. <laughs> so you didn't see the other two doors clearly labeled entrance and exit? Oh, I guess not. It does make sense, though, considering his nickname is the bringer of death, that he went that way. It, it's just funny, because we didn't hear about any other doors from any other person. So now I'm wondering, did what the Vale and all of those people, did they go in a different door or did everybody follow him through this door? The way that it made it sound every time Richard has been up here, when he came up here with, with all the guards and everything, right? They go through the portcullis, up the, the gravel path. Now it kind of seems like the gravel path leads around the building to another door, but there's the stone path. That leads this way? Yeah. But this is kind of the first I can remember it being explained that way. Because before, it was like, that's the only, that's the way there's in. A po- there's a portcullis. There's a portcullis. And, then... and the, the big, uh, what's it called? With the... <sighs> Arch? It's like a balcony kind of thing on the outside of it that you go up to. I... Outside the keep. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a bridge. 
Yeah, there's a bridge. And then there's like the thing. <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs>